Good news everyone! Good news everyone! The React Native world just got better. Expo dropped the Expo SDK 50, we've been waiting for this. There are so many small improvements, but also new features and updates that we should talk about, because these are not only great for React Native applications, but also give us a glimpse at the future of React Native and what's in store, what Expo has planned for 2024. Stick around until the end to hear my thoughts about what this future might look like, and now let's dive into some features. So the Expo SDK 50 was released January 18, 2024. Um, it includes React Native 0.73, so latest version. And we're gonna go through a few categories here now that I think are important regarding this update. So first of all, we got dev plugins. Um, these were already teasered uh, at the last release in August and now they're ready for prime time. So basically Expo is introducing an API that makes it easier for library authors or adventurous app developers to build browser-based plugins to debug the application. And I start with a few regarding Apollo Client, Tinstick Query, React Native Async Storage, and React Navigation. And these are really interesting. If you check it out, the example, um, it just allows you with a Shift M to open up a selection between the different debugging tools for your app and then directly in the browser debug your React Native application. It is really impressive to me. And especially it's interesting if you check out the documentation here uh, on the dev tools and how you can include them. It's pretty easy. There are just a few uh, dev plugins right now, but the usage should be really straightforward. And there's also a cool guide on how to create such a dev plugin. So if you're interested, definitely check out these guides. And also the usage is super easy. So I'm really looking forward to <laughs> improve my debugging with that. On top of that, because it fits the debugging category, I will pick up further down in the release notes. There's a preview available of the experimental React Native JS debugger UI. So this is an interesting one because you can start this, you can try this by setting expo use unstable debugger one when you run npx expo start and then we'll get a UI like this. So expo will talk more about this in the future. I just wanna put it here because I think it belongs into the debugging category and shows that debugging definitely got better. Okay, the second biggest category is probably plugins or packages. There are a few cool new things, uh, especially Expo SQL Lite has a next package and Expo Camera now has a next package, which basically means it's a great new uh, version of that package. So the SQL Lite library is interesting because it's a complete rewrite of that. Uh, so you got now sync and async methods, you got prepared statement, update call, they like even blob data type. And all of this is uh, to make it possible to add support for SQLite extensions such as CR SQLite. They talked about this before in August, that was already impressive. It's basically about syncing different SQLite databases across devices. And we're gonna talk more about that in the end. For now, just notice that SQLite, great new improvements and also Expo Camera has um, a completely revamped API. If you check out the documentation, you're gonna see uh, that you can now have this camera view included, which is a bit different than before. But in my eyes, the React Native Vision Camera from Mark Rosavi is still probably one of the best things you can use if you want a more feature complete camera in React Native. I also had a podcast episode with Mark Rosavi. Check that out on all the things about React Native Vision Camera. It's really impressive. It's great that it's mentioned here, especially the frame processes about React Native Vision Camera, but just want to include it. We got this as well. Additionally, we got Expo Fingerprint as a new package, which helps to see how do I know if a JavaScript bundle is compatible with a particular build of my app. So you can now run npx expo fingerprint dot and will give you the fingerprint of your application. Interesting, somebody used Vexo Analytics uh, in here. Who is, who's done this screenshot? That's interesting. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it gives you a nice hash here and you can compare that with uh, other hashes. I will now also jump a bit because I think regarding to the category of plugins and stuff, it's good to mention uh, native fonts. So where is it? Uh, native fonts. All right, it's under other highlights. But I think it's uh, the right place to mention Expo Font Config Plugin now supports natively adding fonts to your app. This is pretty cool if you just know a specific font will be used in your application, so you can just include it uh, right here. Additionally, also Expo Secure Store gets a handful of new improvements, so if you're using Expo Secure Store, that is pretty good news. 
And we also have something more now related EAS. So let me go back to that section. I intentionally skipped this part here. We're gonna come back to that in a second. For now, let's talk about Expo EAS, so the application services from Expo. They um, especially build was improved. So Xcode 15.2 is now the default macOS worker. Uh, we got some regarding the warnings and errors, but also Expo Orbit version one is released. That was a pretty cool thing. Uh, when it was announced, you can install this now and Expo Orbit really helps you to easily deploy um, versions from EAS to your simulator is really helpful if you work with a team. But there were also more changes regarding EAS update. So you can now use the use updates hook, which uh, was teased in August as well and gives you access to checking if there are any updates to your Expo uh, over the air updates and to your application. This is really cool, it just makes everything more granular and easier to use. And also rollbacks are now here, rollbacks and rollouts. So that means you can now roll back your uh, version that you shipped to the previous version in case somebody broke something. And you also got more granular control over how to roll out. Uh, your over-the-air updates. This was also, I think, uh, announced last uh, year already. You can basically say like, okay, we got this cool update, but please only roll it out to like 75% of the users and we're gonna see how adoption is, how it works, and then we're gonna re um, release it to the remaining 25%. Really cool uh, improvements and updates to uh, EAS. So I think this is going to be helpful for many companies as well. Another probably smaller but interesting category is that Bexisic Expo modules now support tvOS and macOS. Honestly, I haven't worked with tvOS or macOS yet, but this makes it a lot better to work for those platforms. So I definitely want to do something about that. I have no idea how I could do a tutorial on tvOS because it's like, but I don't know. Uh, if this is for you, go check it out. There are cool uh, additions and updates regarding TV and macOS, and I think we're gonna also see something about the Vision uh, OS in the future, but I don't have that device yet. We're now coming to a bit smaller category. I call this internally tooling updates. So you can find this, as I said in the beginning, we have now React Native 0.73 included here. Uh, the Expo Dev Client now defaults to loading the most recently project, but also the NPX Expo Run command now has new functionality. So you can use NPX Expo Run Android or Run iOS if you're using CNG, uh, or if you just run NPX Expo Run, it will ask you which platform you want to use. So like small improvements, but they can really um, like make your workflow a bit easier. On top of that, there's a command NPX Expo install fix, which upgrades the Expo package to the latest patch version. This can be really helpful, as I said, or as they said here, um, most developers try to stay on the latest versions of Expo SDK, which is definitely recommended as well. So give it a try and you should be able to quickly go to the latest version. But also if um, you're using the React Native Community CLI, there's now the React Native Upgrade Helper. It's a great tool that you can use. You can check it out here, uh, how to upgrade your project in case you're using the community CLI, but still some SDKs from Expo. Going to be really helpful for many people as well. The rest here isn't really important to the tooling. Yeah, bundle splitting with Metro, but we're gonna get to that in a second. Uh, or maybe it's now time to talk about Expo Router 3. So the funny thing is that there's actually just a really small entry here about Expo Router version 3, but it actually links to a blog post from Evan for about the Expo Router version 3 beta. I actually don't want to say too much about it. It is impressive and I have a video planned about this coming next week, which includes uh, all the cool things of Expo Router. The main feature is probably that, well, it's of course faster and better and everything. We got smaller bundle size, but API routes are coming now with Expo Router version three. So that means you can basically have a React Native project and include API routes, making this project like a full stack project. Yes, you still need to deploy them somewhere, but it allows you to have all your code in one place uh, and do like unbelievable things basically. I'm really, when I saw the announcement for this initially, I was like, how and why? But it's so impressive and so powerful. Gonna talk more about this uh, over the next time. But Re Expo Router version three is incredible. I think we're gonna spend a lot of time unpacking all the cool things of Expo Router. Uh, it's a lot faster for static website exports. We got API routes, we got 
uh, route-based bundle splitting for the web. It really improves the uh, performance. Um, you can like configure the directory in case you have a problem with naming of directories and um, a lot more small things. You should definitely read through the whole beta announcement here as well. I will also bring on Evan to the Rocket Ship podcast very, very soon to talk more about Explorator version 3 and also what's coming in the future to version 4. The last area is some improvements and other breaking changes. I'd say you can read through all the small things here in the project. I just want to pick out a few. So uh, Expo Webpack Config is deprecated now. CSS enabled by default, DS config path is now enabled automatically. Uh, so we got some changes to these things. But in terms of breaking changes, you should of course check the versions here now. And the first thing I actually noticed in terms of breaking change was regarding Expo vector icons. So when I used them, uh, I had some iOS and MDoI um, material design prefixes in my code and they were removed as far as I know. So this was definitely a breaking change that um, not concerned me, but definitely one that I noticed immediately. And beyond that, there's a big article from Evan as well about Webpack support in Expo CLI now deprecated. So with Expo SDK 50, this is deprecated in favor of Metro for the web, which allows a lot more things. We just look at this here um, with Expo Router. We got a lot of cool things. As I said, we have a lot to unpack with Expo Router and explore over the next time. So just keep that in mind that uh, Webpack is now deprecated. And this is also a nice transition to the outlook and the glimpse in the future of Expo SDK 51 or what we can expect in the React Native world. There is a sentence here that I want to put really some, some thought into. The choice to use Metro for all platforms was driven by our mission to create a fully universal React framework. Let that sink in for a moment. A fully universal React framework. So we all know how Next.js evolved and how it has become like the go-to React framework. But what if Expo becomes the actually fully universal React framework? I think this shows a lot of the ambition from Expo and also what we can expect in the future. Expo Router is a substantial feature that we will take uh, into our applications in the future. It gives us role, a file-based routing for native applications. We have the same routes for web and mobile. It just opens a lot of doors, including performance gains, the static export and everything we've seen with Expo Router. And this is just version three coming. I think there's also a version four plan. So what this shows is basically that Expo is putting a lot of effort into making universal applications a reality. And that's, I think, what we've seen last year as well. We can now use CSS with Expo for the web. We have native wind with a great version coming up. So there will be a lot more options to build fully universal apps that work great on iOS and Android, but can also work great on the web using Expo and especially with Expo Router. This is one of the messages that I take away from here. But beyond that, I still think the important areas to point out are that debugging is a big focus of Expo. So over all the last releases, there were some improvements regarding debugging. We can use the browser tools. Now they're bringing in all the other tools to inspect uh, the packages we use to the browser. And this trend will just continue. So I think debugging will get a lot easier over the next one, two years. And that is great news for every React Native developer. The third area that I think will be very important is offline first applications. You can see this trend if you're living in the bubble on Twitter or X already, a lot of content coming regarding offline first, local first, and Expo did some work for that in the past already regarding CR, SQLite, and making that work. And this new release of the SQLite library just shows that they're heavily invested into the topic as well. I expect to see more from Expo later this year regarding SQLite, regarding syncing your local database, and making offline first applications a lot easier to build for developers. Because at the end of the day, these apps are just more snappy, they work faster, and I think they offer great benefit to the end users. And so this is certainly a topic we need to talk about. The fourth area we should talk about is the Expo Go application. So a single SDK version per release of the Expo Go app looking ahead at SDK 51. There was recently a tweet on Twitter which also pointed out that we basically shouldn't use Expo Go for more than just basic testing anymore. That is probably in my eyes a bit hard because Expo Go 
has a real great use case. You can quickly spin up something, other people can quickly check it out. And I've talked to many companies and Expo Go just worked perfectly for them. They don't need to include native modules in their code, so Expo Go just continues to work great. But this tweet, in combination with Expo telling us that there will only be one SDK included with Expo uh, Go, means that we should at least be careful. If you rely on Expo Go, also get familiar with Expo Prebuild, get familiar with continuous native generation, how it works with Expo, because creating your own dev client and your own development builds isn't actually that hard. Let me know in the comments if you want more information about that, but basically this means that Expo Go is probably not the most important thing anymore in the future and we should all adapt and learn how to work with pre-builds. All right, I think that's everything for today. This video was probably longer than I expected. So we got all the cool new things from Expo. I hope the overview helped you. Check out the links below this video to get into the full change log and keep an eye on the four areas that I mentioned. Expo Router, Universal Applications, we got the debugging area, we got the offline first area, and we got Expo go so these areas will be interesting in 2024 and beyond and of course next week i will talk more in depth about expo router version 3 and api routes i'm just too overly excited to talk about it right now honestly we will do it next week but leave a comment below what you think is the coolest thing about expo sdk and also what you hope to see more of in the future and i'm pretty sure the expo team is monitoring these videos as i know so Thanks for watching and leave a comment. I will catch you in the next one. Make sure you stay subscribed so you get the video notification next week and then happy coding, Simon. <laughs>